All right, hello everybody, it's Mrs. Clymer again. And around you, you have probably seen, if you've had a chance to leave your house and get in the car, chances are you have seen planters in the fields. And in the fall when I visited you, we talked about farmers um, planting soybeans and corn in the spring right now. And then in the fall, we were talking about harvesting that corn. And I mentioned soybeans, but I was, assuming I would get to come to your classroom in April and talk to you about those. That didn't happen, but I still want you to understand a little bit about the soybeans we grow in Iowa. You know that we grow more corn than any other state. We're number one for corn production. For soybeans, we have been number one, and sometimes we are, but currently we're number two in the nation. And the state who's number one is our neighbor to the east, and that's Illinois. We kind of go back and forth, kind of tends to be Iowa, Illinois. This year, I haven't seen that statistic for 2020. I'm not sure which one of us is planting more currently, but in 2019, Illinois did have a few more acres of soybeans planted than Iowa did. However, we're number two, so we still produce a lot of soybeans, but often we're not as familiar with what those are used for as we are with corn. When we talked about corn, we said that we can create ethanol or a kind of fuel for your car and it's renewable. So unlike petroleum oils, we can continue to grow corn and get more of it. We can renew that resource. We also talked about how corn is biodegradable. So it's more earth friendly and using things like bioplastic made from corn oil or soybean oil, and using things like ethanol from our corn burns cleaner in the air. We can make really similar products from our soybeans also. So I'm going to read a book called Pod to Plate, and you're not going to see me. You're going to see the pages of that book, and this is my favorite book. I'm really sad I didn't get to come share it with your classes because it's my favorite one to read. In that book, they are going to talk about the life cycle of a soybean. So starting with a seed all the way through its life into harvest and then how we use those soybeans once they're harvested. I want you to pay attention to a couple things. First of all, the end of that book talks about many of the products we use from soybeans. And that's gonna be your project this week is looking for some of those at your house. So I want you to pay attention Think about, as you hear that list in the book, think about things that you have that you've used at school or things that impact your life, okay? And you'll understand that a little more after you hear that book, and then I'll explain that to you also. Um, but I'm going to go over to that book, and I want you to sit back and enjoy. This was written by Illinois Soybean Association. And I wrote them a thank you last year. I think it's an awesome resource. Iowa has similar resources like the My Family Soybean Farm book. And I will put a link to that so that you can check out other resources if you'd like to see those too. Enjoy. Pod to Plate, the life cycle of soybeans. Winter in the Midwest is cold and snowy. The soil rests waiting for spring. Soon the snow will melt the air will warm and it will be time to plant the soybeans. The farmer will use a tractor and planter to plant the soybean seeds. The seeds need to be planted at the right depth and spacing. Farmers use settings on the planter and computers in the tractor to plant them correctly. Soybean plants grow very quickly. In the heat of summer, they can grow an inch a day. The plants will be three to four feet tall when they are done growing. Plants need four things to grow, water, air, sunshine, and nutrients from the soil. In the summer, small flowers called blossoms bloom on the plants. When pollinated, these blossoms will turn into pods. A soybean plant will have 60 to 80 pods, and there will usually be three soybeans inside each pod. As the soybeans grow, farmers watch for pests that can hurt the plants. Insects can eat the leaves, stems, and roots. Weeds steal nutrients and water away from the soybeans. Plants can get diseases too. To keep plants healthy, 
Farmers can use insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides to control the insects, weeds, or diseases. A healthy plant produces more soybeans. In the fall, the soybean plants are at the end of their life cycle. They turn from green to brown and the leaves fall off. The beans inside the pod begin to dry and become hard. When this happens, the soybeans are ready to harvest. Farmers use large machines called combines to cut the stems and separate the soybeans from the pods. Once the soybeans are harvested, semi-trucks or wagons take them to large grain bins that hold the beans. These bins can be on the farm or at a grain elevator. From there, the soybeans are sold to companies that will make them into things we use every day. Many of the soybeans grown in the United States are sold and exported to other countries. Trains, barges, and ships carry soybeans from where they are grown to countries all over the world. The rest of the soybeans are used here in the United States. Soybeans are usually broken apart or processed before they are used. The beans are heated and ground into soybean meal. Meal is an excellent source of protein. Soybeans can also are also full of useful oil. The soybean oil is squeezed out of the meal. Soybean meal is a wonderful food for farm animals. Pigs, beef and dairy cows, chickens, and even fish eat soybean meal. The protein in the soybean meal helps the animals grow and be healthy. These animals make food for you to eat like bacon, hamburgers, milk, chicken, eggs, and fish. Soybean oil, protein, flour, and lecithin are in foods that we eat every day. Soy can be found in soup, bread, yogurt, cheese, peanut butter, salad dressing, snacks, and even chocolate. You may also eat it in tofu, soy milk, soy burgers, and soy sauce. Large trucks, buses, tractors, and combines use a fuel made from soybean oil called biodiesel. Biodiesel is better for the air because it burns cleaner than regular diesel. Soybeans also can be used to make crayons, paints, and the ink used to print books and newspapers. Soybeans are renewable and environmentally friendly. Building materials like insulation, plastic, countertops, and glue can be made from soybeans. You have many products made with soybeans in your home. Lotion, makeup, pet food, and car seats are just a few of the things we make with soybeans. This family grows soybeans and the fields surround their backyard. They take pride in growing food for other people. They work hard to protect the land and water around them for their family and yours. Okay, in that book, at the end of it, you heard that when soybeans are harvested, they can be turned into two parts. So the harder part or the physical soybean that you feel when you're holding it can be ground into soybean meal. And if we look at this right side over here, um, you see some products that come from that soybean meal. So right here in this blue box, it says many livestock eat soybean meal, which fuels their bodies to make milk and meat. So when we talk about our livestock eating that, they can eat those soybeans, and then their body uses that energy to produce things that we consume um, once that animal's harvested. So if you've eaten beef, pork, chicken, fish, if we hop down and you've eaten, or sorry, if you have drank milk, those things come from livestock who are fueled by that soybean meal. Um, we also learned about a lot of products that use the oil. So things like crayons can be made from soybean oil. Not all of them are, but they certainly can be. You know they can come from corn oil too. A lot of mayonnaise is made with soybean oil. And this whole list are things that can be made from the oil or other parts of that soybean once it's processed or broken apart. So your project for the week, if you would like to be entered for the drawing for the prize, is to find this page. There's a link to it on our website. So you can either print this page if you would like, or if you don't have a printer or don't want to print, um, you could write a list of the things on here that you have used. 
So we have a little scavenger hunt and your job is to use this list to find things in your house that you have used. If you don't have them now, they can be things you've used before, things you've used at school, or over here on this blue list, you see some things that don't necessarily have soybeans in them, like a tractor, but we know that tractors use diesel fuel and we can use biodiesel, this word you see up here. Biodiesel is made from soybeans, okay? Just like we can make ethanol from corn for our car, um, this list has some things that use biodiesel from soybeans. So if you want to enter, you're gonna find this page and either write down the things you've used or print this and circle the things you find. Um, but we have a whole list over here on this orange side that have parts of soybeans in them. And then like I said, this blue side has livestock who eat soybean meal and then the things we get from our livestock or a lot of um, vehicles who can be fueled with that biodiesel. So if you'd like to enter, find this and have fun checking out the things you use that use our soybeans. Have fun guys.